Good afternoon. My name is Kelsey Hammock, and I'm on the partner engineering team here at Sigma Computing, supporting our relationship with Snowflake. Today, I'm excited to walk you through a demo of Sigma's user attributes functionality that allow you to specify which Snowflake role and warehouse query sent from Sigma should be executed on. For today's demo, we'll be leveraging a retail data set, and I'll be showing how this user attributes functionality, along with row and column security policies in Snowflake, can determine not only which Snowflake role and warehouse my users are tied to, but also what data they're able to see in Sigma. So without further ado, let's get started. So for today's demo, we're gonna start out in Snowflake. I'm gonna go ahead and use my sysadmin role. I wanna use my user attributes database, my demo data schema, and I have this table called customer portal. And let's take a look at the data set for today. This customer portal data set is a fictitious retail data set um, from a fake company called Plugs Electronics. And what we're looking at is different transactions that have happened, including how these purchases were made, what items they purchased, the brand these products belong to, as well as some data around the customer who made the purchase. For today's demo, I'm gonna be creating a customer portal for the brands that sell their products at the Plugs Electronics stores to log into and see how they are performing in our stores. I have this portal built out already in Sigma and it's gonna look like this. So this is my sales performance. You can see the current warehouse and user I'm, or the current role I'm using in Snowflake as well as some of the different transactional data. When I go into edit mode, I can go down to my lineage in the bottom left and I can see that this is built from that customer portal table in Snowflake tied to my user attributes demo connection. So I have my portal set up and now I wanna secure this portal for my end users. So the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to Snowflake and I'm gonna create two different roles. The first role I'm gonna create is my developer role. And this would go for my developer team internally, maybe at Plugs Electronics who's building out my portal. And I do wanna create a role specifically for the users from Samsung so that when they log into my portal, They'll be hitting Snowflake in a Samsung assigned role. They will also have a Samsung assigned warehouse and they should only see Samsung labeled data. So I've created these roles. I'm gonna also create a warehouse for each of them so that their compute can more easily be tracked on the Snowflake side um, as it will be tied to those specific roles. I'm gonna run through and do some grants. And this is just allowing these new roles to run select statements against the table to leverage the new warehouses I've created for them and um, to grant that role to the sysadmin role as well. So that hopefully I'll be able to access all three of these roles throughout the demo. I'm just gonna quickly test that. And it looks like I am able to get into all three of these roles. So we're good to go there. Now, the first thing I wanna do to securing this data is I'm gonna create a column masking policy. And what this policy is doing is masking data when my current role is not sysadmin. So the policy is written so that when I'm in the sysadmin role, I can see the values. But when I'm in another role, it will return a string of asterisks. So I'm gonna create this policy and then I'm gonna apply it to my customer portal table so that hopefully all I will see for the customer names is asterisks unless I'm in that sysadmin role. So we're gonna apply that to our table and now let's test it. I'm in my sysadmin role, and when I select against that table, I can see all of my data is still here, including my customer name field here on the left. But when I move to my developer role, leverage my developer warehouse, and select against that same table, we should see that the customer name is now masked for the policy we've created. And there it is. So as I'm no longer in the sysadmin role, Snowflake is going to return a string of asterisks as I've asked it to. And I just want to test that for the Samsung role as well to ensure our policy is working as expected for all of the different groups in here. And there we have it. Customer name is masked as a, role, as a string of asterisks. So now that I've got my data uh, locked down to some level at the column level, I do want to add a row access policy. And this is going to determine which rows within this table my users should be able to see. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create this table that's called entitlements. And Snowflake is gonna leverage this entitlements table as kind of a mapping table 
to determine what data my users should see. So I'm going to insert a product brand name and a role, essentially tying the Samsung group role to the brand of Samsung. And now I'm going to create this row access policy called my brand access policy that for my developer role, when I'm in that role, I should be able to see all of the different rows of this data set. But if I'm not in my developer role, then it's going to go to that entitlements table and determine what brand I should be able to see based on my current role. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this brand access policy. And now I'm going to apply it to my customer portal table. And now what we should see is that when I'm in my developer role, using my developer warehouse, and I select against this table, my product, my product brand should show me all of the different values because I am in that developer role, so I still have access to every row of this data with the exception of the column of customer name that is masked for me. But now when I move into my Samsung group role and use their warehouse, when I select from this customer portal table, I should only see rows returned that correspond to Samsung as the product brand. So let's go ahead and test it. Let's give that a minute to run. And now when I scroll over to my product brand, I can see that I'm only able to see rows of data that correspond to the Samsung brand. And I additionally cannot see that customer name data that's been masked. So now that we've created our row and column access policies in Snowflake, let's go ahead and move back to Sigma and create our user attributes. So from my homepage in Sigma, I'm gonna navigate to the administration tab by clicking on my name to the right and going to admin. On the left, you'll see this teams column and I've created two different teams for the purposes of this demo. My Samsung product team, and my developer team. And currently I am the only member of both of these teams, but in a real world situation, that would not be the case. The next thing you'll notice is this user attributes feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and click user attributes and I'm gonna go ahead and create an attribute. This is gonna be called user attributes role. And the default value for this when no other uh, role is assigned is gonna be sysadmin. I'm gonna do the same for a user attribute warehouse. So we'll call this user attributes warehouse. And the default value there is gonna be compute warehouse. It's just another warehouse I have within my Snowflake instance. And I'll go ahead and create. Now that I've created my warehouse attribute, I'm gonna assign that attribute to different teams. So the first team I'm gonna assign it to is my dev team. And for my dev team, the value that I want them to be assigned is going to be that dev warehouse we created earlier. We're going to again assign an attribute, this time for our Samsung product team. And their warehouse we named, let's check over in Snowflake, we called it the Samsung warehouse. So their assigned value will be Samsung underscore warehouse. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for my user roles. So back in user attributes, I'll go to this uh, attribute we just created and assign it. And for my dev team, I want this to be the dev role. And for my Samsung team, I want this to be my Samsung group role. You'll notice that Sigma is gonna prioritize these. I can drag and drop these around if I wanna see them prioritized in a different manner. Um, and, as, and that's what we'll be doing in the purpose of this demo, as I am the only member of both of those teams, and so that's the only way for it to show um, the changes there. But right now we have it prioritized as the dev team goes first. So when I go to my customer portal page, I should be accessing it in this developer role. Now that I've created my user attributes, I need to assign them to the connection. So I'm gonna go to connections on my left, and I can see this user attributes demo connection. This is the one that is currently feeding that customer portal. And I'm gonna edit this connection. For the warehouse, I'm gonna tell it I want it to use user attributes warehouse to assign the warehouse. And for the role, I want it to use user attributes role to assign the user role. As the admin, I'm gonna go ahead and enter my password and then click save so that these changes are now attributed to this connection. 
And assuming that we've done this all correctly, we should be able to log into our customer portal workbook as the developer role and see that it's using the developer warehouse. And so far, it looks like that's working correctly. In the top right, I've got these two different text boxes that are just calling the function on the back end in Snowflake to return my current role and current warehouse. And you can see I'm in that developer role using my developer warehouse. We can also go look at this transactions table and make sure that that masking policy we applied to customer name is passing all the way through to my portal. And there we can see that it is. So my customer name is masked. I cannot see that data in Sigma, but all of my different brands are showing. Now let's go ahead and reprioritize these attributes so we can see what this would look like for a member of the Samsung group. So I'm gonna, again, go to my administration uh, portal. I'm gonna go to user attributes, click into warehouse. And this time I want the Samsung uh, attribute to take precedent for my warehouse and for my role. And now when I head back into my customer portal, I should see that it's filtering this data set to only show me data related to Samsung. So let's go ahead and click into there. And it's worked. So we can see all of these values updating to only reflect data related to Samsung sales. I can see that's my current warehouse and my current group, as well as going down to check this transactions table. Now when I scroll to the right, the only product brand I'm able to see corresponding rows for is Samsung. And again, my customer name has been masked from me for the policies that we set on the Snowflake side. I hope this demo today has helped you better understand user attributes in Sigma and how they can allow you to specify which role and warehouse should be leveraged in Snowflake to execute queries set from Sigma. In real world scenarios, this functionality will allow teams to more easily manage user permissions, as well as more easily track compute spend in Snowflake by tying end user groups to a designated warehouse. If you have questions about this functionality, please reach out to me at kelsey at sigmacomputing.com and I'll be happy to connect you with the appropriate member of our team. Thank you for your time and have a great day.